Hey, you there. Are you a Krita user? Have you ever heard about the built-in recording function in Krita? You have? Oh, you, act you actually tried it and then you encountered a bug that that completely ruined it? Oh, uh, let me guess. Uh, so you made your great masterpiece in Krita and you used this recorder to capture the whole footage. And then when you were done, you said, oh, Krita, would you please turn this recording into a time lapse? Press the export button, and then you went through this whole procedure, and then your time lapse came out something like this. Now, I have a solution for you there, but first I want to show what exactly causes the problem and how to solve it. Okay, let's do a really quick demonstration. I generally work in a, a 4x5 ratio. That's like the thing that I find the most comfortable to work with, so my resolution would generally be something like this from the beginning or if I uh, want to get smaller then I will just go with 2000 by 2500 dear ambulance please for the demonstration let's create something else 2000 by uh, 1500 and you will see why now if you've never used the built-in recorder of Krita it came out in like late 2021 if I remember correctly if you don't have this window you can find it in settings dockers and then a recorder. You have to choose a directory where you want to save the images. The capture interval, it is uh, pretty much take one picture of the entire canvas every two seconds. For this demonstration, I'm going to change it to one second. You can save it in a JPEG and PNG. If you use PNG, that's going to give you a much bigger file size, but you can uh, use like a transparent background for, or something. I'm going to stick with PNG and I really recommend lowering the quality to about 80%. What it's going to do is uh, the end result is going to be pretty much indistinguishable, but the file size is going to be significantly reduced. You can see on this uh, Frankenstein picture that this 100% version is about six times as big as the 80% version and uh, that's going to add up really quickly. You can record in the original resolution or you can go with half or quarter. I uh, generally go by around a thousand pixels for a video. You press the recording, you make your magnificent picture and then you click export. Then here you can modify what you exactly want it to look like and it's going to put your time lapse together or if you click on this button you can see your individual images as the program saved them and this method has a little bit of an issue and i'm going to show you why let's say that i want to make a really quick portrait Well, not long after uh, starting your picture, you realize that, hey, this uh, aspect ratio is not really going to work out for me. There's just way too much space around the character and all that. I, I would much rather have a tall picture. So you go into image, resize canvas, and you say, oh, let's go with that 2500 that this uh, weird artist was talking about. And uh, all of a sudden we have a lot more friendly space for ourselves and just Continue working as if nothing happened. As you are working further on your image, for all of a sudden you realize, well, uh, I, I want it to be a bit bigger because I want to work with finer details, scale image to new size, and you type in 4000 by 5000, so actually you double the size of your image. And there we go, we have the image size doubled. If you press export, a little bit and check out our final images what you're going to see is that the original images that it saved are these 1000 by 750 pixel images and then eventually when we changed the canvas ratio these images are 1000 by 1250 why is that an issue you will see in a moment but we just created another one because all the images now that we're going to be saving are going to be saved in 2000 by 2500 because the original file is 4000 by 5000. There's this little thing that these values don't update immediately when you change the image size. If we close the document and open it again, that value is going to update. And there we go. Would you look at that? 2000 by 2500. Important to note that it's already saving in this resolution. It just doesn't say it on the 
on the screen. Now technically you could actually click on the quarter and it would continue capturing your images in the same resolution as before. But also if you are just changing the ratio of the image back and forth, you cannot just always make sure to record in a resolution that is going to be good for you. So it's much easier to fix it later as I will show you. But now let's continue the recording and let's finish this image. Hmm, there is something missing from this image. There we go. Okay, let's say that uh, we finished our beautiful picture and we want to turn it into a time lapse. What now? You can resize it, but I'm not going to bother with that. You can only put in one size at a time, so it's not really going to be helpful. Click export. And you know, it is going to take uh, a few minutes, especially if you made a really long and complicated picture. But in this time, we can actually use this to take uh, a little break and we can uh, do something like, I, I, I don't know, listen to some music that can help us uh, calm down a little bit. Okay, our video is ready, let's check it out. And uh, look at that, this is how it came out, because the original aspect ratio was different, so what Krita did is it stretched the original part of the image to fit the resolution and the ratio of the final part of the image, so it starts out like this and then it switches back to normal as soon as you reach that place where I, uh, where I change the aspect ratio. But at least uh, the size change is going to work perfectly, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, if you want to fix this thing, you can actually load it into any video editing software and stretch it yourself, but I found it uh, to be a little bit too tedious and uh, obviously every time you render something, uh, it loses some quality, so I want to show you an easier solution to make it perfect. I forgot to mention that uh, at this point you either blindly resize it to a ratio that you type in or you can only have it in your highest resolution that you saved. So if you don't want to re-render it or to import it into another file, when you do it through my method, you can uh, change it to anything that you want. And you're going to have access to a preview where you can uh, see how it is going to look in the end. What we need to use is this really nice program named Blender. Now I can hear you saying, wait, wh what are you doing with Blender? Isn't that a 3D program? Well, Blender has a built-in video editing tool. Essentially, this is an open source video editing program. By the way, I should turn on this lamp I should plug in this lamp. There we go, and my camera picture is uh, much better now. <laughs> Little bloopers. First, I have to change the resolution. Since we worked in a 4x5 ratio, I'm going to change the resolution to 1000 1, by uh, 2550. I never make a video that is bigger than this, I don't think it's needed. Choose some frame rate, let's go with uh, 120. Obviously, the more you set this, the shorter your video is going to be. Choose our output folder. I'm just going to save it into videos, for example, accept. Change the file format from PNG to FFmpeg video. This is important because once I made the mistake of leaving it as PNG and I saved like 8,000 individual frames as individual PNGs onto my desktop. That was a really fun experience. Under the encoding, change it into MP4, the output quality, I put it on high every time and encoding speed, if you put it to slowest, it's not going to take much longer, but the file size is going to be smaller. Let's go back to Krita, click on the export and we have this little button that can open our folder. We have 1263 items here. So let's go back into Blender and set the end frame to 1263 and we click add image sequence, find the folder where we saved all of these. Now these are my images that I want to import. Now you press the letter A to select them all, add image strip. Now you can see on the preview that it is not going to stretch your image. 
it is going to create a border around it. Now you can pretty much see the original version here and then it switches to the other one without distorting your image. And then comes another issue when we expanded the canvas it doesn't fit the resolution anymore. First of all this part we don't have to worry about it we're just going to have a black border in the final version but then we find the place where the size change happened our first frame that is affected is 475 now you can do a right click and split or press the button k this video is separated into two parts make sure to select the second one click on transform and now you can modify the scale of it let's just put in 0.5 to both of these there we go and now our entire video is 1000 by 1250 pixels and the ratio is not messed up and the scale is not messed up and we can just have one smooth and continuous time lapse of our entire process all you need to do is press render and render animation and now depending on your options it is going to take you a few minutes again Okay, it seems that our rendering is completed. Let's check it out. And there we go. We have the original aspect ratio in the beginning, and then it just jumps to the net bigger one later on. When you make it through Blender, you can also make your own uh, preview in the beginning or end result if you want to. You can pick the latest image. You can just stretch it as much as you want. The only thing that you have to do is find the last frame. This is 1549. So let's put it in 1549. And when you render it, this image is going to remain still at the end of your video. I just feel like that this is a much better way of making your time lapse. Let Krita record it all, but don't use it to put it together. That's pretty much the, the whole moral of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me in the comments if I helped you or if you have a better solution than this. And as always, have a nice day, do some art, and don't forget to have fun while doing that. Farewell. A talent agent is sitting in his office. A family walks in, a mother, a father, a little girl and a little boy. And they say that, hey, we have a nice family act that we would like to perform on stage and we are going to showcase it right now if you want it and then the agent insists that well we don't really do family acts they are uh, they are too cute and like people are not really interested in them but the family insists that no 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 this is something very original it's something that you've never seen before and then the agent says okay you have two minutes and the, the family pull out some briefcases and from the briefcases they pull out two laptops and along with those two laptops two digital drawing tablets one of them is a one by Wacom M and the other one is a Wacom Intuos Draw S. And the two kids sit down with the two laptops and with the two drawing tablets and then they draw their family members. The son draws the mother, the, uh, the daughter draws the father. And then they connect to the office printer and they print out what they drew. And then, you know, the parents hold up the pictures that the kids made for them. And then they all hold their hands and they take a bow. And they do it all of it in Krita. That is the most important detail I forgot to mention. They are all doing it in Krita. They are opening the Krita on the desktop. They are making the image in the in the desktop. They are using the unreleased printing feature of Krita that is going to come in like 2036. Everything is done in Krita and they earned the money for the laptops and for the digital drawing tablets through doing art commissions in Krita. And then after the act ends, they all take a bow. And then the talent intelligent says, wow, that was the cutest thing I have ever seen in my life. What do you call yourselves? And the family says, we are the Photoshop users.